Okay. Um, so, you've all got notepads, pencils, dice. Um, you've got your um, character sheets. Everyone's got everything. Yep. And everything is sort of accessible. Mm -hmm. Um, what I've got here is the the campaign <coughs> the campaign that I'm run, that we're playing is called the Lost Mines of Fandelva. So there you go. Ooh. And what I've managed to find is I've actually managed to very sneakily find a pre like a game zero. So it's like okay. a, a kind of a way for us to get to know each other, get to practice roles, but without actually me killing all of you or anything <laughs> like that so it's well oh, the that's night is so young nice of you. yeah so uh, you know i'm trying i'm trying depends on if i depends on if i get a natural one when i roll my d20 okay. <laughs> it does what we'll do with that what we yeah we'll kill you ourselves <laughs> probably so yeah we're going <laughs> you, to you won't even have to bother in killing us we're going to the way that we're going to do it is when we there's going to be we'll go through that we'll have various checks and various kind of practice roles and things like that and none of it is going to actually be scored if that makes sense so um it's a way for you to practice pretty much like all of your spells or mm -hmm. attacks and those kind of things without actually like really doing damage so it's like being in a, like a dojo or something and you're going to be able to kind of go through and practice everything out but nobody's gonna like actually take damage however if you do roll a natural one or a 20 we'll kind okay. of we'll we'll yeah. go with you doing something really cool and like like <laughs> like really, like, really, really like, really like, like 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 matrix style parkouring and you know we'll yeah. we'll we'll make it cool we'll, but you're we'll not actually gonna a like fancy way my my poor my poor guy isn't actually going to die so well that that's quite good so i'm just going through this prepare the players okay um doo -doo -doo -doo. right questions is what well, what would you like what should we go through do i, I mean have, have any of you played D D before no, no. 3.5 briefly so yeah. you've you've got a brief knowledge so the best way to, maybe to do it is to go through just to go through a player sheet they're all the same it's just your stats will be slightly different and kind of what they mean and how they're going to actually affect you more importantly because numbers are just numbers but you need to kind of know what they're going to mean so don't mind me with my fizzy mint, so. Okay. I'm using you, Kala. Okay. So, um, Kala um, hey. is flame um, and will be from this point on, Kala. Um, she is a wood elf. Um, what I will, what I, I did is I sent those little kind of sheets around in the thing so you kind of know what each other is supposed to look like. Um, she is chaotic good. That means that, generally speaking, your core values are good and positive. You know, you're a kind of a, you're a decent person, but you're not going to necessarily like. If there's an, if the option to do something good might break the law, you'll probably go with that option because you're not lawful. You're not yeah. like absolutely down, like straight down the line. That's generally what chaotic means. It just means that like you might, you could go either way, but it's probably going to be going towards the good because you're all good players. You're a good kind of party. Um, if we go down the left hand side, so you've all got stats which were rolled for you by me generally. So sorry. Um, <laughs> so you roll um you roll and you take basically you t you you get lots of different you get lots of numbers from the rolls and then what you do is you allocate those numbers depending on the character that you want to build so for some of you um so for set for the um for color for you for instance um you have you have your one of your highest stats 
in your dexterity because you're mm-hmm. going to be wanting to be a bit more acrobatic to sort of to run to kind of hide behind trees and to sneak around a little bit more and to sort of move a bit faster which means right. that you've got faster moving speed and various other things unfortunately what it does mean is it means that you're not necessarily the brightest pickle in the bunch and you're <laughs> you're you're not super charismatic unfortunately <laughs> Yeah, but that's what oh, minus one. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, and that's what they basically that means. That plus one, plus three. What you sort of assume is that um, zero means mm, you're, you're not very good at it, but you know you're kind of not like normally average. Plus one will mean that you've got a little skill. Plus <coughs> two, more skill. Plus three is probably one of the highest that you'll go. You might get to plus four when you get to like a higher level and whatever, but plus three is pretty fucking good in whatever you've got. So if you've got a stat that's got plus a minus four, one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got a if you've got a minus, it means that you are below av- you are below average in something. So for instance, if if your dexterity was minus one you're pretty much going to stumble into things you're going to be or you're going to be clanking around (laughs) that like the most unsubtle person so be like can you pick that up for me knock a vase over (laughs) that's what it's going to be like what that means is that as a party once you get to kind of if you take a look at those stat cards as well at some point and you get to know each other a little bit more you'll know who is the best one of you to maybe have a conversation with an NPC and try and get some information out of them? It's going to be the person who hasn't got minus one charisma, so it's probably not going to be you. <laughs> Talking but... to those people, yay! <laughs> but... I have, uh, I'm, I'm not the one to ask to fight things, because I, I will get pushed over. I, what? I have the minus one in strength. Ah, oh, oh. you're super... So you're... So as far as um, strength goes, so let me go to Rowan... Or I and Iona as well. Rowan and um Rowan and Iona are our, are your strongest party members. Um, that's Jesus what Ash, Ash and yeah uh, Ash and <laughs> Ash and Freya are playing. Um, Ash, however, is so, the, Ash, roll five for us. Ash is the Ash is the fighter. <laughs> I'm a bard. <laughs> Ash is the, Ash, Ash is your fight is the fighter. So he is he's got the, the biggest. <clears throat> strength he's plus three strength which means that he's going to be the person who's cl- up close and personal as far as fighting goes because he's going to be able to wallop them he's going to be in there with his swords and <laughs> and you know hitting if you're minus which i think ash is which is shadow <laughs> but i'm going to go for the try to go for like your player names um you have got various um let's just double check let's go through got Iona, got rowan there you are you have got something called you've got um you can throw your daggers you've got a thorn whip mm-hmm. and you've got spells so you're getting you're another spell caster you're also um you've also got something called healing word which means that if say um rowan goes down in battle because he's up close and personal but is a little bit squishy you can say a word and heal him some hit points and he can get back up again and keep stabbing and those are the kind of that's basically the way to think about it if you're dexterous you're going to be able to um, make acrobatics checks if there is something you need to get up to somewhere or jump over something anything like that send your dexterous people first check <laughs> stuff out yeah that's me <laughs> um, stealthy ranger is stealthy your, constitu- <laughs> your constitution is um, basically how tough you are so your constitution will be things like um, if you drank something and it may- or you maybe like ate a mushroom thinking it was okay but actually it's poisonous so apparently my character is just allergic to every- my minus one 
Wow, you right. are absolutely allergic to everything. <laughs> just like there was a soft breeze, I need to go lie down. It's like, oh my god! I was like, as you're as you're walking through, um, trying to stealthily walk through, like um, like a gra- some grass or something, and all you can hear is Iona sneezing in the background. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Thank you already, <laughs> already. Um, so yeah, your constitution, generally speaking, is how easily you'll be able to shake that off. So. Um, if you were poisoned or something like that, you will generally be able to do, you'll do a, a constitution check or a saving throw. Um, I will explain all of that. And what it means is that you will roll. And if the roll that you get is less than what I have written down, you're poisoned or something's going to happen. If it's more, you shake it off and you're okay. A minus pretty... constitution is very strange for someone with my backstory. Well, considering where I grew up, you I think. Yeah, but I didn't have your backstory when I did them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just, you know, just going to have to go with it. Make something up. It's fine. Um, if your intelligence is zero, your intelligence is just sort of kind of av- like average, but you're probably not going to be the person who's like rushing in and trying to like decipher arcane texts or anything or trying to work out like kind of puzzles and things. You might be like, yeah, y- do you want to go and do that one? I'm just, I'm going, to, I'm going to jump up onto this ledge here because I'm much more dexterous and check this area out. There might be, that's the sort of the way that you look at it. You never divide your party. Rule number one, like, just don't, don't split the party. In our first game, let's divide the party. Yeah, yeah. that's it. And I'm, that's I, I'm just going to be there going, oh, God. Okay. What's the difference between... Go some this way. No! What's the difference between don't... intelligence and wisdom? Yeah, because I have zero intelligence, but plus three wisdom. So... Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get... Here we go. I'm going to get the... Hello. I'm going to get the player's handbook for out here because it explains it much better than I can. Because... What the? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm not on that side of him. I'm... He's. <laughs> ah! Wow! It's arm He's, he's, he's on like... my left. <laughs> oh! I'm, I'm I don't like. Oh, I don't like that kind of weirdness. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. Uh, wisdom. You have okay. flipped yours. You're flipped. I'm I'm regular. Ash, raise your right hand. Right hand. Right hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, it really what has happened. Yeah. <laughs> now we know who has minus one intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> Stop it. Sorry, Liz. It's alright. Wait, I- are you? Let's just look at my stats. The uh, the answer to your question, um, or your question, um, you know, this is the problem. I'm going to be like, yes, this is where you are on the screen, but not necessarily where I am to you. Wisdom measures perception and insight. So if you are, for instance, in a forest at night time and you are camped, you will take checks so you'll take a watch overnight and you will divide yourselves down so a couple of you might take a watch whilst everyone else sleeps and then at three o'clock in the morning another two might get up whilst everyone else sleeps i will make you do something called a perception check and what that means is whether you can whether you're wise enough to be able to kind of see maybe like a tiny like flickering in the bushes or that kind of thing. So basically, if you have got a good wisdom, you might be want to pair for a check for that kind of thing with somebody who hasn't. (laughs) Because if you've got two people who have got no wisdom, you're just basically going to be sat there going, and you get an like, arrow in the side, arrow like in the side of the head. Okay? Um, intelligence is basically like your memory. So, um, and your ability to reason, and your ability to sort of, to reason. So to puzzle things out, to, um, to maybe recall information. So 
if your intelligence is low it might well be that you've not necessarily like read a lot of books so you've not necessarily got a lot to remember you've maybe um who's got quite a low intelligence right certainly for your story a lot of it will be that you have been trained um in sort of archery and about like what wood skill like woodland skills about like like so being able to like move through the forest without being impeded or anything like that but you will have spent an awful lot of your time outside so you're not going to be like bookish yeah. so you won't necessarily like you won't be able to go i remember once reading some information about the vigilance of stendar she says using skyrim because she can't think of anything else because you won't have come across it yeah but you might be very wise because you might have a great perception Hang because on, that's how minute. you've been trained oh. anything what well, right where are we yeah, so like um, oh idea. <coughs> oh, just going to move things around because for Aramir has got there we go okay um anything specific to your characters whilst flames whilst um I was I'm gonna have to cut us out calling a color I'm gonna have to actually be good not it isn't here no, no. wait so wait um, go on flame phoenix or dark color no, Flame Phoenix is playing. Oh, yeah, we've we've got we've you've managed to choose really <laughs> like names that it's like so. We Ash. Have, so we have Shadow. So we have Shadow. Who is in my own defense, yeah, I picked I my bad. name way Sh before I knew he was joining. Exactly. Right. So I Shad was... Shadow Cast Demon. <laughs> I was so just trying to, mi to, try to match the faces. Shadow Cast Demon. Okay. Yes. Yes. Hi. Shadow Cast Demon. Hi. Is Ash. Flame Phoenix is Kala. Dark Kala is in America. So <laughs> that's not going to work. Okay, Flame Kala, but not Dark Kala. But not Dark Kala. Okay. Just go. Ash, but not Ash. <laughs> Ash, but Rowan. Super Zaramil. Still... I'm happy with you. Super, you're yeah. my favourite. Still, still, yeah. still tree based. Still tree based. Okay. I just Google for names. <laughs> so we have. Um, next to the next to your stats block, you have your proficiency bonus, which is plus two. I have added that to your stats. So everything that you are proficient in, which means you have been trained in it. So I could pick up, um, I could pick up a longbow tomorrow, and I could have a go at firing it. I might be able to get the arrow to go a little bit of a way, but I've never been trained in it, so I don't really know how to use it. What this does is it means that if you are trained to use um, a certain weapon or um, trained in a certain language, you will be proficient in it. You will be better at it. Um, so, um, Kala, I'm going to use you because you're basically you're the first you're the first one here in my in my thing. So I'm using you as a guinea pig here in like for everything. Go ahead. So, <laughs> so Kala is proficient in simple weapons. What that means is weapons like um, short sword, longbow. So stuff that doesn't necessarily have anything mechanical about it. Um, so like daggers those kind of things so nothing to nothing complex but nothing oh you know you, you could batter somebody with a sword and like <laughs> with a piece of wood and you'd be proficient at it you know it's like that yes. <laughs> um martial weapons so um things like um oh i can't remember like the sort of kendo sticks those kind of those kind of things mm. you are proficient in um in that kind of stuff so if you've ever seen i don't know if you've ever seen sort of critical role like the um the uh the cleric the monk has like a big, mm -hmm. big stick that's the kind of thing that you could be at. um and also a flute you are nice. apparently <laughs> proficient at playing the flute say, yeah, really fighting with it wouldn't guys. get very far um <laughs> you have that's it and you are and you can speak common which is what we're going with orc apparently orc draconic and orc 
I wrote yeah. orc twice, so you're <laughs> really good at orc. Okay, um, cool. But what it means is that there might be a moment, if you look at the languages, um, so you'll all have, um, you might have different languages, so some of you might speak dwarvish, elf, goblin, um, I think instead of orc... It shouldn't should I be able to speak yes, elfish? Yes, I was going to say, I think instead of orc twice, I think one of them should be elf um, elvish. So if you'd like to okay, change yeah, that, I please. Because if you can't... Elfish. If you can't... Yeah, elfish. Elfish. <laughs> Not elven, elfish. Um, yeah, because Fre Freya, can, Freya can. But what that means, mm. so when if you look at that little kind of proficiencies box, if you're proficient in certain weapons, so um, Rowan is proficient in all armour, also proficient in playing cards, mm. which is which is a really which ca can be used. So I'll give you an example. Rowan is proficient in playing cards. He also has a charisma of plus two maybe if he's you're in a tavern you can like you could challenge somebody somebody mm. somebody says to you i'll give you information but only if you beat me <coughs> at a hand of um, a, yeah. um a, like a hand of cards will play i can't even i'm you know i might try and have some more yeah. sleep before next time Hold but them, them. it <laughs> means that you it, go fish God. yes like, snap, <laughs> snap. <laughs> if you beat me at snap you can have some information but because he's <coughs> proficient in it, it means that he will um, be able to add two to his score. So it just awesome. means that he'll be better than any of you guys who aren't necessarily proficient at something. Which means that you all have your... Um, you all have things that you're really good at and you also have things that you're not so good at which means that you balance your part that's how you balance your party it's why you will all have moments where you will shine at certain things you will all have those moments where you kind of go i know i'm going to be able to go to get do this freya can you know um iona here is going to could maybe get up on stage and i've not uh, got any in any music stuff in my profession <laughs> i've just got weapons and languages you might want to add that. Well, you, you're not a very I did, good bard. I didn't want to make... No, I'm not a very good bard, really. <laughs> no, I add to my profession. No, no you put, put musical instruments down, because apparently, yeah, I don't know how, where you're carrying this stuff, but apparently in your equipment, you are carrying a drum, a flute, a lute, and a shawm. I can't even say shawm. <laughs> I think it's like an oboe type thing. Mm. Like, sounds like you're trying to blow into a weasel. I'm not entirely <laughs> sure. But... Eddie is our reference. Absolutely. I understand. <laughs> so if you get... Um, so, again, for instance, Freya is proficient as a bard at sort of musical stuff. Um, she's not... Um, she's also incredible. She's very charismatic. She's plus three charisma. So hey. <laughs> you could have a mo you could have a moment where she will get she could get up on stage and try and distract everyone whilst one of you guys who's got better who's more dexterous and who is better at sneaking is wearing light armor so isn't going to clunk around might kind of sneak, Sorry, I mean... might might go in somewhere and sort of try and steal something or try and like get something try and get a book try and get some information whatever so there's all these things that having that proficiency bonus can sort of help you with hmm. um going back up to... question, how do we know what we're proficient at? is the uh bottom left bottom, side of... bottom left uh, it will say yeah, yeah. yeah. bottom area. left it should say proficiencies so let's go to you and Ash. Uh, in the proficiency bonus right uh do you guys because mine's empty i don't know if it's yours should just be plus two i don't oh, okay. know um, okay um i wonder why i haven't written uh, that down yeah, well, maybe it's... maybe it was, but mm, at at the point of printing, maybe it didn't print. That's fine. Okay. But it's plus two, but you don't have okay. to. Um, certainly not in any of the um, anything that I've already. Don't jump ahead of yourself. Okay, that's me. I'm so talking it's... to my. I'm talking to myself. <laughs> so, um... the bottom left where it says other proficiencies in languages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So it means, as far as I just have a bunch of weapons. You have, um, you have a lot because you've that's it, quarter staff. 
so there might well be you've got um you have a you have a you have um a spell called thunder wave now and you also have a quarter staff you could to add texture to add that kind of like cool like visual <coughs> you could get out your quarter staff and you could slam it on the ground in front of you and that will send a ripple of this spell out so you could use things that you've got to kind of like make it like sound cool <laughs> though thunder wave is pretty cool if we go back I'm, I'm really i'm just going through this to make sure that it sort of all makes sense so yeah you've got your proficiencies under that you've got languages so it will sort of say what languages you're sort of proficient in i'll tell you what i'm going to put some like kind of little background music on whilst we do this <laughs> um you are proficient in certain languages what that means is that sometimes you might meet somebody or you might you might encounter what's called an npc <coughs> which is a non-playable mm -hmm. character and what that means is that um that character that character might be an orc now if you guys don't speak orc you're not going to understand what this per what this character is saying because you don't speak the language however if you do speak the language you are going to understand so it may well be that i will either say Kala, you on you understand this or um Kala and iona you understand this the rest of you just hear gibberish and then we'll tell you what you hear if it's sneaky secret i might send you a message over discord just to let you know so the others don't know what it does mean however is one of the other things that you really have to be careful about is that you don't do something called meta gaming which means that you don't know stuff that you're not supposed to know so sometimes you will hear things like if i'm sp if i'm telling somebody it's something that's spoken in orcish you're and if you don't understand it you shouldn't know it so you can't pretend that you can't then act like you do know it you'll have to like ask like what did they say it's that kind of thing we we call it sort of meta like meta gaming so it's just like not kind of yeah not knowing stuff that you're not supposed to mm. know oh my well, god I, can't, knowledge. I love how it like the ac must be so good that shadow's actually putting a blanket <laughs> around her i am like i am literally like if i could get away with it i'd be like all you could see is this and i'd be like woo <laughs> underneath so um on nah, the, on the left he likes it cold. That's why oh, I am jealous. Every time, I, every time I put a blanket on, he turns the AC up, so I have to take it off because he doesn't want me to be cold. Aww. Now Aww. he's got headphones on. I can talk about him behind his back. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I like that very much. Except I've got the thing that when I'm wearing headphones, I think I can talk about Jim behind his back, and he's like, I can't hear you, you know. Just because you're wearing <laughs> headphones. Jim, 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 Jim. Um if it's easier. Yes. Yes sir. Because this is slightly vinegar. Yes, that's fine. Okay, super. Bye. 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 There you go. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna be like he heard oh, you. God. His ears were burning. Yeah. <laughs> he heard you. Um he clearly heard you. If we go up to, because I don't want to like keep you forever, and we do want to actually like do some like playing, but I just want to make sure that you kind of there's some stuff that we can look at when we actually get to play, which we don't need sort of so quickly. But it's good to kind of understand the basics. So if I go do a charisma saving throw, you don't go <laughs> what? So underneath proficiency bonus so it's like your second column of like of block of boxes you will see something called saving throws yeah mm -hmm. so you will notice that maybe a couple of them are shaded in so what that means is if it's shaded in it means i will have added two to 
you'll say too i will have made you proficient in those things so kala for example if you have to save against strength it, what it means is i've made you proficient in saving against strength so actually what that means is that you are not so great on the attack because you're only plus one you're not bad but you're not brilliant but you're plus three on a saving throw which means that defensively you are better you have probably been trained to be defensive so you have been trained to take defensive stances to be able to knock to block that kind of thing you're not necessarily you're not a you're not an attack you're not necessarily attacker you're better at sort of defending yourself um, I've also, um, for you, because you're a ranger, I've made you proficient um, in dexterity, which means if you take a running leap over that gaping chasm and you roll, you can still roll a little bit shit because you're plus five. So it means that you're <laughs> not as likely to fail. So in a, sa in a sort of a saving throw, that kind of thing. Um, generally speaking if it doesn't have a little if it's not shaded in it's just the plus one plus zero it's the same as your normal stats so it means you're as good at saving as you are at doing it doesn't mean yeah. you're any better okay um next box along your armor class so your armor class is basically how easy you how well you can protect against things so, for instance, um, Kala, I'm rolling for you. So, I am going to take a, I'm going to take a straight stab at you. No, like additional, uh, no additional pluses or anything else. It is what comes up on this roll. So, I will roll eight. <laughs> ah! So, what <laughs> you do is you look. Is your armor class more or less than eight? <coughs> It is more. It is more, which means that <laughs> that blood, so the goblin goes at you. However, trip stumbles and uh, the and the uh, sword brushes past your shoulder, doing absolutely no damage whatsoever. So your armor basically nice. protects against you. Um, however, that was a natural twenty. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> so that's a critical hit. A natural twenty is always going to hit you. You've killed me already, we haven't even started. I know. A natural <laughs> 20 is always going to hit you, and it will always double and it will always double the attack. So if you got a natural 20 against one of my guys, then yeah, you're just like, get dead. <laughs> but you just kind of have to hope that necessarily I don't do that with you guys, because you guys are really squishy. Okay. <laughs> um so that's your art. It's so fluffy. <laughs> Basically, it's so yeah. Fluffy. I mean, Kala, your armor class is fifteen, so you're quite you're not going to be as easy to hit. Um, whatever, whatever it is that you're wearing, it's pretty pretty decent. It has been well tanned, well weathered. You are, as far as your armor class goes, kind of well togged out in very very sort of solid leather, probably because you want you're not going to wear heavy armor because you're still going to be running around yeah. so but it's going to be like it's going to be really kind of mm. tough um <laughs> aramil yeah. yeah you're basically like wearing i don't even know like a dress <laughs> <laughs> your, armor, your armor class is it's a robe <laughs> a robe sorry, sorry. It's yeah a beautiful dress. <laughs> it's a very very pretty dress um your armor class is 12. It, that's yeah, yeah not it, yeah it so again you are probably because your other class isn't so good you're going to want to be away from the fray a little bit so you're going to be yeah. doing much more ranged work firing things off from the mm. distance because if you get up and close and personal with an armor class of 12 anything over 12 will possibly do some serious damage to you so you just gotta kind of be aware of what you're wearing and your surroundings um iona you are also pretty well togged out with an armor class of 15 um i think that because you're where because you've got like a loot and a drum and various other things i think that you basically defend i think you're, I, I think basically <laughs> you're like the the woman from labyrinth who's like 
here's a little pony, isn't it pretty? You're just wearing loads of crap. You don't actually get anywhere near you. One woman band set up. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) basically, like like in, um, yeah, like in Mary Poppins. Oh yeah, Dick Van Dyke was yeah. like the yeah. whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's basically Bells that. Yeah. I'm not great for like stealth if I'm essentially just like Yeah, what? you're basically a what every time you like move. <laughs> apparently my stealth is great. <laughs> yeah. My stealth's great apparently, so that's, we, very we, we can, yeah, What we... was that? It's been the win. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you've come back. Um Rowan. <laughs> Is wearing heavy armor because Rowan is because um, Rowan's a, Rowan's the fighter, and he's also rich. So he has bought some like really good armor, um, which means his armor class is seventeen, which means only three, like or only a little bit will hit him. So he that means he's safer getting up close and personal. And then Ash. Your armor class is 13, which means that it is slightly better than Aramil's, but it's not great. Um, again, you're going to possibly be much more, um, a little bit more in the background, not necessarily getting in, like, right in there. You're going to be, maybe, you're going to be wearing something practical, but not necessarily the, like, the most armored that you can get. Pardon me. The um, initiative is the next thing along. Initiative is how quickly you are able to fight. So, when a battle commences, I will say, roll initiative. What that means is that you get your d20 and you roll. So everyone get their d20 and roll it. Instructions unclear. Dick caught in ceiling fan. Okay. <laughs> Joking. I was going to say, there are things I don't know about you, Freya, if, that, if that's true. Okay, so if we can go through. Cal, what did you get? Six. Six. Um, <coughs> Rowan? Uh, 14, but I've got a minus one on initiative. Okay, that's great. So if you rolled, um, what did you roll, Cal? Six, but uh, I've got plus three initiative. Okay, so, that's nine. so your your initiative will be is nine. Then, um, because you're fat, because you're dexterous, you're fast. So if and you're perceptive. So as soon as you see somebody's coming at you to attack, you can get in there because you're mm. you're quicker. However, Rowan here has got like he's got to put his armor on. He's got to like make sure it's all polished. Maybe like. <laughs> the quick siesta oh. so he's practice his accent a little bit yeah so you're my so he's <laughs> my, so he's minus one because he's gonna take longer because he's wearing heavy armor it's all it all makes an awful lot of sense if you think of it in if you imagine why these things are the way they are they're not just numbers they're a a number translation of like what you what you imagine to be happening so what did you get ash um, not you. Thirteen. No, no, I'm no, talking. Not you, right. I'm no, still rolling. Right. Yeah, <laughs> this is gonna so when get. When we tell you <laughs> what we rolled, we go ahead and add the proficiency. Profi- yeah, you add the, the you add the proficiency. Okay. You add the proficiency or minus in got, some people's points. I got nineteen. Okay, you are you are going to be attacking very quickly. <laughs> I rolled a seventeen. <laughs> That's really oh, good. Nice. Um, Aramil. Fourteen. Uh, Sixteen. Sixteen. Iona. Row 12, so 15. 15. Okay, so, um, and I only rolled a 9, and uh, and I'm saying that I don't have anything, which means that all of you are going to be attacking before the bad guy, because you go in order. So the highest will go first, so Ash would go first, and then it would probably, I can't remember exactly, but it, it, it goes down in your proficiency number mm. until poor like Rowan like staggers in with his heavy armor like <laughs> <laughs> should have should have had that pie you know um, <laughs> the speed thing will be more um more relevant when we start using maps um mm. your speed basically means the amount of the um, the distance that you can move in an action so when you uh, a map that you will see will be divided into like a like a grid pattern (coughs) and each one of those little squares is like five feet so what it'll mean is you might have like 
a little character piece and you'll say, I would like to move 20 feet towards the barrels and I can, and I'll move you like four little clicks over. So it's just a way to sort of measure how far you can move. Um, I think Rowan's probably, has Rowan, Rowan's 30 feet. 30, you're all, yeah. you're, I'm 30. You're all yeah, going to be 30, also. apart from our wood elf ranger, who has just got that little extra push because yeah. you know, she's, ju <laughs> she's yeah. just been trained to be faster. <laughs> um, I won't explain underneath all of that, sorry, underneath all of that, the thing that you really do need to keep a track of, you do need to know, which is why you have a little, why you have a pencil, should have a rubber if possible and keep a note somewhere, your hit points. That is basically how much punishment you can take before you start having to roll to find out whether you're dead. So you have, Kala, 11 hit points, which means you can only take 11 points worth of damage. Mm -hmm. So for instance, let's, let me try and find, a, let me see if I can find a bad, let me see if I can find a bad guy. Um, and explain this for, to you. I have, pardon me, I do have a, I do have a bad, I do have a giant badger. So you can, let's, let's have a look at the giant, let's have a look at the giant, yeah, I'm not a badger. At, giant badger. Um, downloads, um, and uh, it won't be, once we actually sort of properly get into, oh, you've taken the blanket off again. Um, ah, you know what, screw it. I'm, I'm just going to like pretend so um i have rolled an 18 what is your armor class 15 so, so there's 18 hit so 18 hits which means that i am going to roll um 1d6 plus one so four plus one that means that you would take don't write anything down but in that hit you would take five damage from that okay attack that means that you now only have six points left, which means that Ooh. really you can probably only take one more hit. <sighs> now, they won't necessarily, I'll be, it, most of the things will be rolling like D4s and stuff. It won't be that bad. But please just be aware of how squishy you are. You are so super, you are so <laughs> Don't super. Don't jump off a cliff. You are so <laughs> super. I am sweating, by the way. It's so disgusting in here. I have a question about that. I have 17 hit points at yeah. the moment. That's because, that's partly, probably because. Do you have? Uh, hold on. Rowan only has. What? Rowan oh. only has 12. Oh. I am a delicate flower wrapped in thick that's, metal. That's why I'm confused. Like, no, no, why, you why are, have... you have more hit you have more hit points, probably because you have um, you sort of you you sort of steeled your body in some in sort of some ways. So you've got a slightly better con you've got a slightly better constitution. Um, you've also um, you've studied a lot of you've studied a lot of magic. You probably absorb some power from nature as well which means that you have addition you just have additional protection that you can't necessarily see yes okay okay um my question is yeah do we get more um hit points as we level up yes oh yes um <laughs> by, God. yes so as, yes. i have eight eight points yeah eight eight points. So eight, <laughs> yeah i'm, I'm only on ten <laughs> and that's why level one characters it's it's day it's being level one is dangerous you all but also remember that i am here to guide you to enjoy this there is a reason and i know that it's not necessarily if you basically if you're if you're idiotic i will punish you <laughs> sorry <laughs> i will punish you if you if you know Damn well, you have got two hit points left, but you do something that is completely out of character and really foolish. So it goes against your, it goes against your background. It goes against your alignment. It goes against any common sense when you know darn well that there's somewhere someone who is going to attack next and is going to do something. 
I am not, I, I'm, you know, I, I'm going to sort of, I've got to play to the sort of possibility of something maybe happening to you. <coughs> because Ollie. you're doing, because you're doing something that's not necessarily that sensible. And so you've got to kind of, we've, there's got to be a little part of that. Also, though, be very aware that I am also going to be very kind. Um, and also try to make sure that you make it. Okay. You might end up injured. You know, you might end up having to sort of save some of your spell slots to try and heal a little bit more at these early levels. But I will try and I will be as kind as I as I possibly can be. Um, you know, if I see that it's all going to hell and every single one of you is like on the ground, something's going to happen. Don't worry. I will... I don't know. I'll send in the eagles. I'll do some. I'll do, <laughs> I'll do something to help you. So, you know, just you know, don't don't worry too much about that. Um, don't be scared to be. Don't be scared to be brave. You're going to be put in situations which you need to get out of. And if you have to sort of put, if you have to put yourself out there a little bit to help each other, you're gonna you'll do it. And doing that will also might, I might award you something called inspiration. So if you are acting in a way that's maybe, um, that is that is sort of really good for the story, you do something that's really kind of really quite impressive, you maybe go somewhere that I haven't even thought your character could go, you do something that isn't, toth isn't stupidly out, out of character, but is enough to make me kind of go, Wow, I didn't see that coming. I might award mm -hmm. you a point of inspiration, which means that you get advantage on a roll. Mm -hmm. Which means instead of rolling your dice once, you get to roll it twice and take the better score. Okay. That can be an absolute saving grace. Because <laughs> if you your first roll you get three, you might get you might be like, oh, oh god, I've only got like four hit points left. But you've got a point of inspiration. You roll again. 15 woohoo you beat the goblin because you had that point of inspiration because you did something that was good for your party good for the story and kind of was just inspired it was an inspired bit of role playing if that makes sense um what happens if your hp gets to zero if your hp gets to zero if your hp gets to zero you're down so you're basically you're unconscious and you then start rolling death saves so yeah. you basically have to like make three you know, like make three successful saves and then you've got like one hit point again you kind of go Ugh, and hope <laughs> somebody's like dragged you off the field or like healed you or shoved a potion down your throat or something um the other thing to be aware of is if you have for instance 11 hit points <coughs> Kala, and somebody like and it would just never happen it would just never happen at this level so it's not even really something to be aware of but if you basically ever went down to zero and then somebody attacked you for another another 11 points so basically you went down twice the amount of hit points you've got you are dead there is no coming back from it there are no sa death saves nothing so basically no you no your enemy <laughs> that's kind of what happened to Molly. That's the reason that Molly didn't in in critical role. There's a character that doesn't get didn't get to make any save death saving throws because once because he once he had gone down, he was then attacked again, and that attack made more damage than the hit points that he had at mm. best, which meant that basically that that and that final blow, there was just no coming back from it. So that's just you know. If you suddenly find yourself against someone who is doing like 15 points of damage every time, don't let yourself get <laughs> really? to zero and don't let yourself be right in front of them when that happens. <laughs> At least go to zero like behind a pillar or something. Hide behind the tank. Yeah, hide behind uh, Rowan because he's <laughs> sort of, like, tankish. Um, you've all got um, right weapons, attacks and spell casting. So, Kala, I'm going to do this kind of thing and then I'll go through some spells. You have got a short sword, so you would say, 
I'm going to attack with my short sword. I'm going to try and stab it in between, like in, into his armpit where there's a little like gap in the armor. And I'll be like, okay, roll. You'll roll your d20. Your d20 is your is key. So you can, will roll your d20. Yep, so roll it. 20. Oh, okay. Oh. So that, what, 20 or so a 20, oh. yay. A 20 oh. will automatically hit, which means that you can make up something you can make up something really cool how cool it looks like you can come up with something like fantastically imaginative about like how you're going to like do this like stab this person you will then because she got um, a critical hit she then will roll it her stabbing it's um p for piercing so stabby damage um it's 1d6 plus 3 so the dice that you roll if you get a critical is always doubled so whatever you roll on that d6 you double it so roll a d6 two so it's two so four. you'll get so it's four plus three seven yes i can math okay <laughs> so you do seven points of damage which against a lot of level one monsters would be enough to take them out because they are not going to have many more hit points than you guys at all well, something <laughs> yeah basically that's the way that this works there's five of you and the monsters that you attack will not be tougher than any of you guys so you will have so we i will make sure so you will only you you will not be attacking anything really hard until the sort of the bit <coughs> long levels you might get a boss which will be like the hit points will be equivalent <laughs> to like for like you it'll have like 47 hit 40 hit points or something because that's like the majority of you so you'll have to all work together to take it down in various different ways but a, a single like a single bandit i think it's got like six hit points so if you just rolled four you know yeah if you just rolled four five six seven so two, five, if you rolled five, you might have ser seriously wounded the bandit, but it'd still be up because it'd still have one hit point. Mm. But because you critted it, it was gone. Out. Um, longbow, if you have a ranged weapon, um, you do exactly the same thing, generally speaking. So it'll tell you that you'll have to, you should have two numbers under uh, like somewhere around where your sort of your ranged weapon is so it might say like 30 feet 150 feet something like that that is how far away you can accurately hit that body so for instance Kala can shoot her longbow 150 feet without taking this without having to roll a disadvantage at all however <laughs> She has a second number, which is 600 feet. When Ooh. you would ever need to fire a bow 600 feet, I have no idea. But what that means is that second number, you roll with disadvantage. So like I was talking about the inspiration, where you roll two dice, you roll, you'll get to roll two dice and you take the best number. It's the opposite with disadvantage. So if you're disadvantaged, so if you're wearing heavy armor and you're trying to sneak, you're going to be disadvantaged because you're going to be clanky as fuck. If you are trying to shoot something 600 feet away, you're going to be rolling disadvantage because they're going to be like this. It's like trying to like shoot an ant in a barrel. So you would <laughs> roll two dice and you would take the worst number rather than the best number. So if I say roll with disadvantage, that's what that means. It means you roll the d20 twice and you take the shit number. Is nobody wants that. And I don't have a uh, distance for my hand. I can't. What? I don't have a distance for my hand crossbow. I will find that out for you. Let's have a look. I'll find that out for you. It should be 30. It should be 30. It should probably be a 30. It might be 30 feet or 60 feet, but I'll double check that for you. Okay okay so that's how that's how normal weapons work if you have any kind of spell crafting a cantrip 
So if you look at your, so Aramil has cantrips. Iona, you have cantrips. And um, Ash, you have cantrips, yes? Yes. Okay. So what that means, um, and this is different to you, how you will have experienced this, Freya, in 3.5. They've changed it for, fi for 5e. A cantrip you can cast at any time. You have, you could, you could stand and cast a cantrip a thousand times and it wouldn't take any out, any energy out of you. It wouldn't do, it wouldn't really do anything. So it means that, um, for instance, Aramil, you have shocking grasp. You can cast, you can do shocking grasp as many times as you like. The problem is, it's a touch, um, yeah. which means that you I have, have to, to be actually touching you, the... Which means he has to be up there and touching them, which isn't necessarily good if you're as squishy as like eight point Aramil, but you know, <laughs> yeah. it, it can happen. You've got a lot of information, for instance, about Mage Hand, if there's something that's maybe trapped, so there are, might you might think that there's a trap somewhere, you might use you might use your be able to use your mage hand to like open a chest or something yeah. um because then if the trap goes off it's not gonna deal you 10 points of damage and kill you so it's you, good to use those kind of things so cantrips are really really useful um then you have prepared spells so um hold on um so you, for instance, so Aramil, you have four level one spells. What this means is that you can only cast four spells before you have to rest. Um, four first level spells. Um, Ash, you can cast three. And where do I find that at? I'm going to hit. So Ash here, it says, so under your attacks and spell casting, you've got like dagger, scimitar, thorn whip, and then you've got cantrips. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I see that and then now. it says first level three spots, and it's very kind of. Okay. It's it's very like, I don't know. I've written it very very small, but those. That's all right. I have uh, pictures of the other. I have pictures of the actual spells and what all they do. Yeah. So you've got the information about the actual spells. Um, it means though that you have to. You're going to have to rest. So, for instance, if you get into a battle you can't just you can't just if it looks like it's gonna be really hard you can't just willy-nilly be like use all of your spell slots all at once and because then you'd be like oh crap <laughs> because you'd be like well what am i gonna do like stick it like i'll stick them with the pointy end i can't do anything now so it's a case of kind of balancing um like your thorn whip for instance with some cantrips and then maybe um your first level spells will be heavier hitting and then as you get better you'll get more spells for instance um there are things that rangers can get there are things that fighters can get like the barbarian rage there's all sorts of these kind of things that you kind of learn as you'll go along so as you experience life in the world that you're in you kind of you get better you get tougher um so basically read up if you've got spells read up about them we'll do we are going to do like a little practice in a bit because i don't want to sit by i don't want to i don't only want to keep for like a couple of hours um i've got about cantrips as well but um there are things for magic if it says where you look at the magic for instance detect magic if it says range self that means you do it on yourself so you cast yourself as the center and you for instance if it's detect magic you cast you you kind of cast it on yourself and basically anything that radiates out from you in like a 30 so like 30 feet around you in like um in like a big circle you'll be able to find out whether there's any magic so as you move it moves with you so it's not just like you cast it on a stationary spot it means you cast it and you can walk around and that detect magic spell will still be going so that's quite good if you kind of think i need to go down here and i but i don't you know it could be here it could be there you can you could run down there and still have the set magic on 
and you'll be able to kind of just like see whether there's anything sort of magical around you which quite a lot of traps are magical and that kind of thing um, um one question yaha uh -huh. so for example i can prepare uh four first level set spell mm -hmm. um so i could use between rest and preparing them again just four spells like uh, i prepare two magic missiles or you can have like or... all of the, basically the spells that you have are yeah they are open the way that i'm playing the way, the way that i'm playing this is that you know those spells so yeah. you could you you could do four magic missiles mm -hmm. um and okay. then you would have and then you have a, a sleep and yeah. those spell slots are back because you're rested and you're refreshed um okay ash you, the same go the same goes for you you have three right. you have three slots you don't have to like decide in advance mm -hmm. which ones of the spells you're going to have or that you're going to have three healing words or three of that no those are the spells that you know you decide that in the moment in the moment mm -hmm. of kind of being like shit aramil's gone down i've got it i've got a healing i'm, go I'm gonna do use healing word because i don't because we you know or you could do more. You're gonna, <laughs> you will have to yeah. use it a lot. <laughs> Super squishy! Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> I only get three of them though. You gotta be careful. Yeah, don't, yes. She's not a healer. <laughs> now, yeah. that is also something to remember. Not, you don't have a healer to say <laughs> yeah. in yeah. your group. You do not have. Is there anybody else that knows how to heal? Or I have healing word as well. Okay. Freya has I, can, I can heal myself. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so um, yeah, Rowan can. can heal himself once before yes. he has a sleep. Sit normal. Um, Kala, um, I think. What did I have? Don't have anything, do I? You don't have you don't have anything at the moment, but right. you you're but you um you sort of help you're helping them in you help them in sort of different ways. So for instance. If you're with them, you're all, they're always going to be able to find food. If you're with them, they're not going to get lost. If you're with them, um, hold on, difficult terrain doesn't slow the speed of the group down. So in that way, you're going to stop them from getting hurt. And yeah. then you've got um, uh, Iona and you've got Ash, who, if it comes to it, have got a healing spell. Um, you've what got about the... Sorry? Healers kits? Uh, are those just for healing yourself, or can you use those on other people nope, you too? Can, you can buy them. Okay. You can use them on other people too. If you have a healing, if you have a healing kit, then you can, you can use it. Um, there's med, there's medicine checks. There's all sorts of things that can be done. And what we will get, we'll get into that if it comes to it. I mean, the way I am seeing this working is it's going to be very kind of like something might happen. You might go, ah, how does this work? And I'll go. Oh, and I'll do some, and I'll and I'll open my book up, and I'll be like, oh, it's like this, and then it'll be fine. Okay. Because <laughs> um, I've played, um, I've played three point five a long time ago, and then I DM something called Pathfinder. So this is my first time with this, if that makes sense. So I've, you know, I'm kind of learning this as well. So we're just all, we're all learning together. <laughs> um, as far as your personality traits and your ideals, bonds, flaws, they're things that basically make you who you are. So that's kind of for me to know and for you to know as well. And then you will maybe divulge some of this information in some kind of backstory to the rest of your party. But you know, it's what it is. Is it? It might. It gives you. It'll give you an idea of the way that you might act in a certain situation. So, for instance, the last game I played, which was 5e, was um, I um, I can't leave a room without checking for... I have to always check for doors. And so that instantly meant that everywhere I went, I'd be like, hold up, just got to check. And I'd have to... And I would have to check. The person I was playing with, um, his floor was... He's a sucker for a pretty face. So I played it because I was quite a charismatic character. 
I played myself as being really quite manipulative of him because he would pretty much do anything that I said because I was quite attractive and he was a sucker for a pretty face. So it's kind of, you, you use it to your advantage. Also what it means is I know, so if you do something that kind of really goes with one of your flaws or your bonds or something and it re and it makes me kind of go, oh, she's, you know, or he's really paid attention to what, <clears throat> to that. I'll give you some inspiration to say, nicely done. There's all, there's lots of information. For instance, Kala's got favored enemies. So, um, doing survival checks, going through woodland. There's various information that you just really sort of need to read through and then sort of ask me about. Because if I went through everyone's, like now, we'd be here for a long time. But like Ash is, Ash is like, Ash is a druid. Um, so um, has a certain, um, has her Ash wand, which is like the spell focus. Um, I will explain to you about spell saves and spell um, and spell attacks when you actually do it for the first time because it's easier to do than like me saying any of this now. Um, anything else before we actually... Is that a Final Fantasy VI soundtrack? It probably is. It's my background D&D &D soundtrack -y soundtrack. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah. Good taste. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um I'm just seeing if there's anything else. There will be certain things that I will um as I said I will um I will explain to you as we go along. There'll be various um checks that you will be doing that um use like in intelligence, use your charisma, um like for <laughs> For instance, I might, if you try desperately to right, to steer a cart that's like, run, that's like running away and somebody's been, you know, the driver's been shot and you're trying to take over handling this cart that's like out of control, I will ask whoever, somebody to do an animal handling check. It will be the person who has got the best wisdom and wisdom modifier so that i would at th this kind of stage i'll i will prompt that because you guys don't necessarily you won't know each other well enough to know but you would always be like iona grab the horses if you happen to iona no <laughs> and, you'd, and, you'd, and you'd be like really <laughs> are you sure and, so, not a good idea. and then you would roll and and whatever and i will decide how hard it is for you to pass that check or not and i am god <laughs> so um there might be yeah there's you, you take turns there's surprise rounds all of this kind of stuff movement blah -de blah -de blah making an attack so i'm just wondering if there is i I think we can probably just like have a start if you fancy just because it shouldn't be it won't be very long but it's just a way for you to all kind of practice a few Come things on. practice a few roles and then we'll as if you feel kind of comfortable about that then we'll be kind of ready to like yeah do the ooh. right so i'm just gonna get my i'm just gonna pop to the little adventurers room i'll be right back <laughs> <laughs> You're not clunk, 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 clunk. There he goes. Such a little adventurer, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, right. I'm going to put this out because this is my this is my DM screen. Uh, it's not like I need to hide things from you, but I've got lots of info. It's got lot basically. And it's like, information. it's like a quick, it's a quick, like a quick reference guide for me. So it's a way of me sort of, in fact, I'll just put it down like this. So keep everything in order. Trying to keep everything but... in order. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. <laughs> the problem is I just don't have enough room. <laughs> I'll do that. I'll put it there. Okay. <clears throat> Prepare your mental space. Really? 
<laughs> like, like I haven't got enough rooms. Yeah. No chance. <laughs> okay, I love this because this is basically like kind of like um um how to greet your adventurers. I haven't done any of this kind of stuff. Using voices, you will not hear me do. I might go lower for a man or higher for a woman. Uh, that's pretty much going to be all you're going to get from me because. You don't even you don't want me to try to try and do accents. I have memories of a game of fun employed quite differently. Oh, I was drunk, Freya, and had some oh, very great. Different <laughs> I was very. We should do we should do a session where we all have alcohol. Oh my god! <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. legal drinking yes. age. Uh, oh, you can sneak it in. <laughs> Damn you, being all American. <laughs> I, know. I know. Okay, so here we go. This is going to be the start so you have spent the last few days following the high road south from neverwinter and you've just recently veered east along the tribor trail you've encountered no trouble so far but this territory can be dangerous and bandits and outlaws have been known to lurk among the trail so at this point for a point of inspiration for every single one of you would you like to please Sort of introduce and describe your character to the rest of the group. Maybe what they would see, um, a little bit about yourself. Whether you're sort of maybe whether you're quiet, whether you sort of um, whether you're quite brash, quite outgoing. And generally, in this kind of situation, the person who's got the high, one of the highest charismas would probably be the person who would instantly do be like, "Hello." <laughs> Anyway, my name is Bowen Bennett <laughs> Alexander Manning. <laughs> Wait, are you not? Are you? You're not higher than me. I should probably start. Yeah. So it's just. So a... we've been making our way through. For how many? How long has it been? Just a few days, and it's kind of you've got to the point now where you've kind of all you're all following the same path. Um, you've obviously all been called to do something. You've obviously all been maybe us they've lit the fire they've lit the fires of you know, like gondor and you've all heard the call and you're all gone the way but you don't know each other you are all strangers to each other in the same way that you're a stranger to us who are sort of watching this from the outside like a film so it's an opportunity to just kind of Maybe describe yourself a little bit. So maybe a little bit about yourself. In character or? You, um, in character is really good. So you could, for example, it'd be like, hello, my name is, you know, hello, I am. Or you can just sort of say, I'm going to be playing. This is the character I'm going to be playing. I don't mind how you do it. Um, you could describe features. So you'd be like, he's a tall man with flaming red hair. So, um, so we're not talking as our character, because it would be a bit awkward if I said, Hi, I'm, I'm a half-elf. It would no. totally be <laughs> my character to talk in the third person, though. It would be, absolutely. <laughs> but it's probably, it's easier to kind of, to almost be like, do it as a narrator, like, this is what you, this is what you, this is what you will see. And this is kind of what you might have been able to kind of sense about me. I haven't said very much so far. That kind of thing, if yeah, that you makes go. sense. So, um, whoever wants to go first, just and I'm going to be taking some notes as well. Master yep. doing this. Uh, so, firstly, uh, my character Rowan is a strawberry blonde human, uh, long hair and a full beard, and a ruined and exactly of man, noble helper of people, seeker of adventure. By the way, it, very quickly, is anyone else hearing some kind of weird yes. echoing? Yeah, yeah, very, yeah, very yeah. bad echo. Very right. to... There we go. Right, there oh, we go. Yeah. I could, we could hear you could hear you say yeah. things twice. Yeah, that push the talk mm. is your push the talk is your friend. Okay. Mm. So you're a strawberry blonde adventurer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Rowan Exalander Manning. That's the voice he's not using. <laughs> Exalander. Right. Manning. I carry a big gold great axe on my back. Uh, that I refer to as my pride. Uh, always happy to help, very up about himself, but you'll notice he avoids dirt and grime where possible. Presents himself very well, but and is very outgoing, and tends to seek any opportunity to point out how good he is at certain things. 
He doesn't struggle with sneaking. He just likes to be very obvious at his ability. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. It's an entrance, not a sneak fail. <laughs> oh, is that what it is? <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, there went the camera for Fred. Oh. <laughs> is she back? Yeah. Okay. Oh, there we are. Ish. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Freya, do you want to go next? Uh... Uh, let's see, um, you know, I'm just gonna bloody all right. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. You know, I thought this would be a bit more exciting, not seeing a single bandit. <laughs> Told me this would be a great way to start my life as an adventurer and apparently been lied to. Tough crowd. <laughs> Feel free to uh, kind of um, communicate. Sometimes, sometimes feel free. Always feel mm. free to oh. to communicate <sighs> with each other, to ask questions. Always, um, be, you don't necessarily have to, because at this point you're new to this, and you're not quite mm. like. It's not like you're going to necessarily be like bang in there really outgoing about how this all works so it's also worth sort of yeah and knowing that you might not necessarily get a response <laughs> so like you there iona um hi yeah you've got some quite you've got some quite quiet people with you i think <laughs> hi beardy what's that axe this is the pride that i carry upon my back yeah I can see that so, Iona, what's your story? Ah, uh, just, uh, grew up in a tavern, wanted to see the world. Same old. Lovely. Very... Common. <laughs> nothing wrong with a little bit of boredom, though. No, Not nothing always... at all. Excitement isn't always the best when it comes to, uh, trying to survive. That is quite true. That said, trying to survive in a tavern just... <sighs> we get so many adventurers come in the doors and tell us tales of all of their exploits and... I just wanted to see for myself, really. And what about you, Ash? Fancy um... wilderness lady, what's your story? <laughs> oh, not too exciting. I'm just trained a little bit in magic. Ooh. Mostly keep to myself. Hmm. Oh, you, in the dress. What about you? Are you in? <laughs> <laughs> I, look you, I look at you <clears throat> like, sorry? <laughs> yes. Dress, it's very Whoa. fancy. Uh, I like it. I'm, I must say, I'm not good at... Uh, like casual um, talking, just mm, like formal. Okay, so, uh, so uh, it's it's like um, hello, uh, my name is Taramil, and I've been um, a servant of Ogama. <clears throat> I could say I'm a seeker of knowledge. Yes. I've been trained in the ways of magic. Um, well, I'm just trying to do my way. <coughs> Sorry, I'm. I have eight eight points. So. <laughs> 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 I'm totally ill. I'm ill. <laughs> Anything will kill me. Sorry. It's all right. Okay. That soup we had last night was a little bit suspect. I reckon. <laughs> yeah, he's got less hit points now yeah, than and, had before. And I'm wearing a dress. <laughs> And he's wearing a dress. And you're wearing a dress. Yeah. A very yeah. fine dress. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, basically I'm not very talkative. Not very talkative. No, Bye. So this is probably one of the mm -hmm. one of the only times that you'll talk about your character as someone who isn't you. Yeah. Um, from this point on, it will always be 
you'll just talk it won't be like i will say i you know my character says this or i say you will mm-hmm. just you'll go straight in you will you you are like i say you are the embodiment of your character um and the last one is Kara, i think um can i do it like in third person a bit um like just me saying it yeah um, yeah that's why i said yeah yeah you could absolutely yeah. this is one of the only ta- this is yeah because yeah. um Kala's quite um serious she doesn't really take a joke very well um she's kind of mysterious as well she's got a bit of a backstory that maybe um i was talking to elise earlier maybe we could like um release it bit by bit yeah because it's kind of like Try to make it cool. Because <laughs> yeah. that's how it's going to work with most of you, that you, will all, that, yeah. you're, that you will have like a backstory, but it's quite cool that your backstory will also develop as you play. Yeah. Because you'll have moments that, you'll, that things will happen and it'll be like, oh, I could use this. Or I might throw something in there and you'll be like, really? I didn't know about <laughs> this. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so she's she used to uh be like the sole bodyguard for the princess the elf princess of her uh, kingdom where she grew up um but the whole kingdom has been destroyed and miraculously she's the only one who survived so she's quite um reserved um she's tallish think of lego last basically just female yeah. and that's who you're gonna be <laughs> lego last Exactly. <laughs> yeah. A last made of Lego. <laughs> um, yeah. I didn't really so, get to say off lot, but um, Ash is like really not really reserved, but just like doesn't really like to talk a lot. Uh, would normally keep to the outskirts of the group. Not normally the very back, but does like to keep an eye out and doesn't involve in a lot of idle talk if it comes down to trying to pay attention. Because I don't mul- or Ash doesn't multitask well. Yeah, she tries to pay attention to one thing at a time, Th- which works really well with the fact that your with like with your like charisma as well being plus one. It means <laughs> just like a little bit more than yeah. like like not at all. Um, if it's yeah. minus one, you're probably you're very resi- you're yeah, yeah. You're, you're, <laughs> you're, you're, go- you're sort so. of you're. <sighs> A little bit probably socially awkward, if that makes sense. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're a little bit more socially awkward, whereas um, if you're plus three, Iona, you're going to that's a, a bard. You're gonna be my much character. More, yeah, yeah, outgoing. My character <laughs> grew up slash worked in a tavern all yeah. her life around Lots people. Of, so yeah, it, absolutely. And now you've stuck with at least three socially yeah. awkward nerds. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> That's and that's and that's how it works. But gradually, you'll be able to add thing. You'll be able to change your stats slightly, which means that you could actually, having been with more outgoing people, you could raise your charisma slightly because you kind of it might end up feeling more comfortable. These are all things that will sort of kind of like happen as the game progresses. If you actually even want to carry on with this, you might be like. Bloody hell. <laughs> this is what, shit. Uh, what race is uh, uh, human? Uh, or Alice is human. Uh, half elf. <clears throat> human drew. I'm a high elf. A high um, elf. I'm a wood elf. So, so there's quite uh, a... I'm, I'm above all of you. <laughs> yeah. So we've got. <laughs> oh, hoity toity! Yeah. <laughs> so we've yeah, got. Yeah, um... okay, I have my <laughs> nose one charisma. So we... Yeah, I... draft. I would be like the one who's. Look at uh, looking at the distance to the group, like looking, mm. yeah, and, and back to his book. Yeah, back to his book, sort of looking um, down his nose a little bit. Noting, so we... noting things in my diary. Yeah, so we've got very like, like analytical. I have, yeah, I have met five, four weird people. <laughs> That's it. This um, it's it's got it's a you've been kind of thrown into this sort of situation, so now you've sort of described your characters now we're going to sort of get into the nitty gritty of it a little bit so i should be looking over here because i didn't have anything in front of me due to printer breakages so i'm reading it off a computer screen so um in the city of neverwinter a dwarven merchant and prospector named gundren rockseeker 
has asked you to bring a wagon load of provisions to the rough and tumble settlement of Fand um, of Fandlin, a couple of days travel southeast of the city. So, you might want to you might want to write a few notes down. Doesn't matter if not, um, but it's quite sometimes it's quite good to have some of these things like Rit had noted down. Gundren was clearly excited and more than a little secretive about his reasons for the trip, saying only that he and his brothers had found something big and that he'd pay you 10 gold pieces each for escorting his supplies safely to Barthen's Provisions, a trading post in Faladin. He then set out ahead of you on horseback, along with a warrior escort named Sildar Hallwinter, claiming that he needed to arrive early to take care of business. So, at this point, um, we it, this is like a flash. We, we it's like flashback time, like in the movies. Okay. Um, so yeah. <laughs> so um, it's sort of. It kind of helps you understand how your characters have got into this situation. So, you remember Sildar Holwinter really well. Um, he's a kind-hearted human knight, formerly of the Griffin Cavalry of Waterdeep. Though he was getting on in years, his keen eyes and prowess in combat had lost none of their potency. Before Gundren would agree to trust you with his precious cargo, he had Sildar test your mettle to ensure Gunjan wouldn't be risking either you or his supplies, though it was unclear which of the two the dwarf valued more. So when we start our campaign, it will start as though like you're escorting the stuff. This this section now is this flashback moment where you're being tested. Okay. So you remember the chatter of full tavern seeping down from above the smell of cedar floorboards soaked with ale and the barrels stacked haphazardly against the cellar wall and the now purple bruises you received in the makeshift area. So what I'm going to do is show you this because I don't have anything properly set up because it's I don't have all this stuff. This is your the sort of the room so those circles are like barrels okay if it's like a square or um like a, a rectangle or whatever it's just it's a crate and that little cross is where this chap is sat so this is like the, the room. this is basically the room so it's basically barrels along all of the walls and a space in the middle okay we don't mm -hmm. we're not going to be sort of going with like movements and all of that kind of thing but just so you vaguely know that that's kind of as you walk in he sort of sat opposite you sat on a ch on a chest okay okay so silda is just sitting before you and he just looks at you all as you walk in and he goes i know that look and you can see on his that his face is really very grizzled it's very um it's very worn it's very weather worn you can tell that he has seen a thing or two he's got some scarring and what looks like maybe some like burn scarring he's obviously been in a number of battles but his eyes are kind he doesn't look as though he has been tainted by sort of battle over the years. He looks like, he looks like he kind of, he, un, he understands what, what battle is like for people and sort of, but just, and just wants to make sure that you are, you are ready for what might await you. So he's got a club in his hand and he's sort of, sort of tapping it down against himself. And you can kind of you're what well, you're looking at this and his eyes are saying one thing but the fact that he's just tapping this club on his hand says an entirely different thing because if somebody does that it's not the most friendly of gestures so he's looking at you and he says i had it too i had that look that look of the need to adventure but that was that was a long time ago but 
Gundren's asked me to size you up to make sure that he's not going to be throwing away his money. I hear he's uh, he's offered you a, a fair a fair amount of gold to make sure that his goods get to where they need to go. And he also makes wants to make sure that you're not going to throw away your lives in the process. And I'm sure that you have a skill or two that you're eager to put to the test. So let's see what you can do. Roll initiative. So this is where it starts. 12 plus 3, 15. Right, so what I'm going to do is I am going to... I will ask... So, did anyone roll 20 to 25? Right, so say yes. Yep, so what did you get? Yeah, yeah hi. Uh, 20. Ash got 20. Uh, um, 15 to 20? 15 to 19. Yep. 15. You got 15. 16. 16, so the colour... 16, Iona, 15, um, 10 to 14. <laughs> five to Are 10. you guys asleep? Five to <laughs> what happened? Five. Five? What did you get? Six. So, um... How? I like how I'm supposed to be the reserved one, but I keep rolling these really high numbers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can just, it'll, sort of, from the background, just be like, oh. <laughs> and then um, yeah, whatever get it then, over with yeah just like just seriously i haven't i, I haven't got time for the, <laughs> this kind of <laughs> nonsense so that so you've all rolled initiative okay so that obviously as i say it, that sort of determines which like who's going to go in what order now normally uh your baddie you, the person that you're targeting will be somewhere in the middle of that so Maybe four of you would attack, and then they would have an attack. The way we're going to do this is because we're not scoring anything. We are. I am going to basically give him an attack on each one of you. After so, each one of you is going to attack him, and then he is going to attack one of you. And we're just going. And we're just going to go through a number of roles. He's going to use various things that are in his um, armory that he can do, which means that he will. Um, he might use some. Um, he might use not some mag like some kind of magic, or whatever. But it means that you can test a few things out. So you can test out like ranged weapons, short swords, spells. It doesn't matter about spell slots. Um, it doesn't matter. We're, we're ignoring all of that kind of thing. Just practice. This is a chance for you to just practice your stuff and see how it works. Okay. So don't don't get don't fret. Be like, oh, I've only got like two spell slots left, and nobody's going to take any damage. Okay. So that's so you don't need to use healing word or anything like that. No one's going to take any damage. So you can save your healing. You can save your healing spells, and you can just like. Thunder wave or whatever. Okay, so I'm going to be club attacks, Griffin wings. Okay, da -da 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 -da. so this is basically a kind of a combat tutorial. I'm just going to make sure that I've got the information. Okay. Oh. So the first person to attack will be Ash. So the way that this yep. works is that normally you would move up to your speed. So you would move, like, you could be like, I'm going to go up to him and attack him, or I'm going to go to the right, I'm going to hide behind a barrel and fire off. And that's how it would work. You sort of say what your movement's okay. going to be, and then you say what your action is going to be, because you can do one movement and one action, unless you have something that says you can do two. Um, okay. So what would you like to do? Why did I have to go first? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm here to um, I'm here to help you. So. so it's just like a little room with barrels all around, right? Uh, yep, yeah, just so. a room. So there's there's just barrels, sacks of like grain and flour and various other things um, around you. I'm just taking, I'm just, you know, this is great. I had everything all, like, properly 
set up. So what do you want to do? Um... So I could go ahead and like try and like defend myself by getting behind a barrel so that he way he can't get at me as yeah. easily. I'm so a bit you, more hidden. Yeah, so you could do that as your you could do that as your movement, for instance. Yeah. So you could if you're planning on maybe sending off um a spell, you need line of sight. Um, okay. so you don't want anything in So I could like you All can right. hide behind the barrel. Around, yeah. I can peek around the barrel, though. Absolutely. So if you want to, if you're going to do lots of ranged attacks and you don't particularly want to get hurt, you could dart behind something and then, like, fi fire, like fire at him. Okay. So yeah, okay. you could absolutely do that. So, what would you like to do? Um, I could uh, use the thorn whip. And just kind of like snap it at him and Excellent. try and catch him with it. Cool. So this is how it works. So for those of you, so um, I shall get sort of would normally you would normally sort of describe what it kind of looks like a little bit, like okay. how uh, like how you do, like how you're doing this. So so I kind of sort of just like kind of get behind a barrel and whip it out at him and try and snack him with it and before being able to duck behind it fully so he can't hit me as easily. Fantastic. Uh, the whip is uh, is essentially like a vine that's just covered in thorns, kind of like a like a rose, but it's like a lot more pliable than a rose stem, but yeah. it's just got a bunch of little tiny thorns in it that'll come off it. Hmm. Love it. And won't, like kind of like a bee stinger. Oh, I love like that. Little stay. So, um, it's instantaneous, it's a cantrip, um, make a melee spell attack against the target. So this is how it would, this is how it will work. I have to basically save against that. He has to save, he has to save against it. So you're going to try and like use your thorn whip against this, against him. Your spell casting ability you need to roll a d20 actually you're, you do this I'm, I, I got this wrong but your spell casting ability is as if you look at your um your sheet um mm -hmm. it says here like maybe two thirds down it says what your spell save is but then it says plus five to hit with spell attacks so what that is is you you roll a d20 and you add five to it and tell me what that number is so add five to it yep why couldn't i've gotten this number earlier <laughs> i got a two. Oh. <laughs> so i got a seven okay <laughs> unfortunately as you duck behind and you try and like thrash the whip out it actually kind of snags on the crate that you're trying to dart behind and just doesn't quite meet him and he just looks at you and he laughs and he goes nice try little girl oh, oh no <laughs> was that a vicious mockery oh. <laughs> um he is now going to make an attack and he is going to try and take out the person who looks he's going to try and he's going to attack the person who he thinks looks toughest so he is going to jump off the he's going to jump off the crate and he's going to run forward straight at you rowan and he is going to make <laughs> oh god <laughs> Ooh. i just want to say at rowan noticing that he's been recognised as the biggest guy in the room. You see this huge beam of excitement across his face <laughs> as he gets to prove himself against the knight. Straight line, hold on. I'm just reading this because I blatantly didn't have a chance to read this before. Right. He is going to... Could you tell me where you are in the room? So I know that Ash is now behind a barrel. <laughs> <laughs> where um could you sort of describe maybe who's at the front who who wants to be at the front of the party so, like more notable is anyone who wants to be behind i mean how are you going to how are you kind of entering that room i would have um 
Don't I'm pretty excited about it, so I'm going to be quite keen oh. at the front. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's... Uh... <laughs> You're going to have to talk one at a time, otherwise it's going to be really hard. <laughs> I'm very Please. keen to get going, so I'd probably be near the front. Okay, and same with... Yeah, not to be outshone, I'd be... What about you two? Um... Can I be near a barrel? Not so that I can duck behind it, but so that I can jump on it for leverage and, like, do a... <laughs> Oh, I like it. Jumping thing. Yes. Don't forget as well. I should have reminded you of this, Ash. You've got a point of inspiration. So if you have a shit roll, <laughs> you can try again. Should have reminded you. <laughs> um, Might happen again, though. So that's fine. Okay. So remember, you've got a point. Of, remember, everyone, you've got all got a point of inspiration. Okay. So what he is going to do is he is going to get off. Um, he's going to jump off the um, the crate in front of me mm. and he is going to um and he is going to charge forward what that means is that he is going to as he runs he is going to almost seem as though he's weaving in and out and it's going to slightly disorientate you so the two people at the front who are more in his line of sight will need to make a saving throw to avoid being basically made so dizzy you cannot stand up so you need to roll it's a saving throw and it is a dex um hold on no it isn't a saving throw it's an act it's an either an acrobat an either an acrobatics or an athletics check so which are you better at i'm better at acrobatics i got plus five. Oh yeah you yeah <laughs> um I and i rolled a 13 Athletics would be me, but which one's athletics? It says so on the on your sheet. Apple of it's below Arcana. It's a four. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. I, I don't have any of them filled in. Yeah, it'll be just your normal. So whatever it says next to it, either strength or. So you're... Yeah, he has none of them filled in. Yeah. I have some of mine filled in with not, numbers. It's because you're not proficient in oh. it. So, so you're, it's whatever you're going to have the highest number in. So for, you for rolled you. A two. Would you like to use your shot of inspiration <laughs> with that roll? Yeah. <laughs> Just to avoid being knocked on your ass. 17. <laughs> what was that? 17. 17. That's a bit better. That is a bit better. So you have so make sure that you notch down that you have used your shot of inspiration, but what it means is neither of you are knocked prone. Your it means that neither of you are knocked dizzy by this. If you are knocked prone, you can do nothing on your next go apart from stand up. So you can't wow. you can't attack, you can't move, you can't do anything. All you can do is stand up. So being knocked prone is not, not, a good not what you want. It's not great. No, it's not fantastic. So um, he did not actually he he's he's run towards you, but he didn't actually manage to um, to knock you prone. However he does actually still get an attack because he's dual attack on you so he doesn't knock you prone which is good because it means he doesn't have advantage on this but he is going to try and attack you Iona with a club <laughs> so all right hold on so this is where it goes against the armor class so if everyone's kind of like watching this as well so um 17 my armor class is 15 yep so it hits so it would do if oh. this was hit actually, like if we were playing yeah. the game, this that would do um, Iona three points of bludgeoning damage. How come three? Ma because How come it's uh, three? Because my armor class is fifteen, he did seventeen. Where's three? Yeah, but come that's out? but it's not the division. It's not. It's never the division of numbers. That throw is just to see whether it hits you or not. If it's above fifteen, it hits, and then I roll. To, uh, then then I, you roll damage. I roll damage right. to find out gotcha. what, how much damage it actually does. It does three points of damage at this gotcha. point. So now Kala is up. So Kala is stood on a barrel. What is Kala gonna do? She's like crouched a bit like a cat on this barrel, and she's seen I Iona been stabbed or whatever, bludgeoned with the club. Yeah. So she leaps up and like mid air. Like with her short sword, just like a massive like swing attack, I guess, aiming. Um, because 
she's behind him, so she's kind of aiming at his shoulder. I like it. So if you could do um, an athletics check for me to make sure that you actually, your jump hits where you want to go first before we do the attack. So on your sheet, if you look yep. at that box next to athletics, it says plus three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So roll, yep. roll your d20. 13 to okay. plus 3 is 16. Oh wow, you you look amazing whilst you're doing this. Oh, yeah. This is <laughs> almost cat-like in, in sort of quality. So you are going down with, what do you say? Your short, short sword. Your short oh, sword. What? Let her know. Sorry, Ash doesn't have any of, you know the box of... Uh stuff there none of it's filled out on him he has nothing on it oh right <laughs> i'm not special no you're not special <laughs> i will i will let you know whether some of them this time like i i will make this up this time around <laughs> and then i will sort it out but okay. you are going to make an attack with your short sword so roll an attack so you roll a d20 and you Again. Have, yeah, because it says so you've athletic you've made your athletics check, so you have managed to do the jump with skill and poise, but you still haven't attacked him. So you look at where your short sword is, it's a short sword plus five. So you roll a D twenty and you add five. Uh fifteen plus five is twenty. Oh that attack that hits five. him. That is way over his armor class. So that hits <laughs> him, so you then do your damage. So you would then roll your one D six. Six. Five. And you add three. Uh, maths. Um, uh, <laughs> eight. 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 <laughs> so that would do eight points of piercing damage to him. So if that was actually that, that could probably that could possibly have taken him out. But um, in this situation, you would describe you could describe sort of how how it how it works so how you're attacking so you've managed to kind of go in you've jumped behind him down behind his shoulders and you have managed to like slice right down between his shoulder blades and he is bleeding profusely but he you know puts his hand he puts his hand up this man has seen some battle and he you know he just sort of brushes you off and he's gone <laughs> to look straight at he's going to look over um, I own his shoulder, and he is going to see our meal. Oh, uh, oh dear! He is going to see our meal, and what he is going to do is he is going to he's wearing a cape, um, and he is going to get his cape, and he is going to sweep it forward, um, and what that does is that sends a buffet of wind towards you. And what that means is you need to do a constitution saving throw, Aramil. Because okay. it's basically, this it's like a stinging magical wind. So you have to do a constitution saving throw. <laughs> so, well, I have plus two, so... Yep, so you roll a d20. 19. Okay, you are absolutely fine. You may be wearing a dress. I just a stand in place. <laughs> you may be wearing a like, dress, like but a there is nothing statue. going to like. take... Yeah, you're going to be abs you're absolutely fine. You're like... Like Gandalf. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> this I does not hit like, me. Is, um, that, is that all you have? Is that all you have? <laughs> Which is what it is now. Um, it's now Iona's go. So, Iona, what are you going to do? Um... I'm gonna attempt to. He, he's turned around. He's he's not facing me anymore, is he? Nope, he's not facing you anymore. I'm gonna attempt to get the back of his leg with my rapier. Nice. Okay, so if you want to roll for that, uh, d20, yeah. Uh huh. Thirteen plus. What do I add? Five. Says... No, 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 no. Thirteen is the d20. Plus five is. Yeah, that's how... what I said. You that you add five. <laughs> oh, oh shit. Okay. Um. So. <laughs> 18 that hits <laughs> math math bad my uh, okay. god <laughs> so one one d6 no one d8 plus three go for it one pointy boy 
So eight. I rolled an eight. Eight plus three. You guys. Uh, Eleven. <laughs> you guys are rolling incredibly, which is really bad. Do you reckon that... because I got the back of his leg that he could be made prone? Because like standing on an injured leg is hard. He he drops down. If you'd rolled if you'd rolled too grizzled. If, if you'd rolled if you'd rolled a twenty, then that we probably would have done that. We would have done that. You could have like they got his the back of his leg and like properly dropped him to the ground. But it wasn't. This guy. That's fair. This guy's. This guy's tough. He's seen more than like a rapier to the back of a leg. So he is going to. He is going to try, and um, he's going to basically. He is going to run towards you, Ash. He is going to kind of look over because he wants to test all of you. He doesn't want to like. He's not like like kind of messing around here he wants to sort of test you and he hasn't tested you yet so he is going to try and run towards you using um uh his red knight's gambit which is what he's going to do to try and make you feel sort of dizzy and sick so okay uh, you need to make either an acrobatics or an athletics check so you choose yeah. whichever one you're best at. It, it doesn't matter. No, they both and the same. The, that's with the d20, right? D20 and the, add the, add the it, score. Yeah. I got a nine. Okay. I don't have anything for the acrobatics or athletics. Okay. Um, do you have um, your... I still have my... Yeah. Okay. So Gen generally speaking, that. it's worth... Um, if you're asked to do something like that, the the DC, like the damage, kind of like how hard it is going to be, generally speaking, uh, easiest is going to be a 10. Okay. So if we think an easy is a 10, middle is a 15, and ye gods, like <laughs> you you may as well be trying to open a cell door right. blindfolded as 20. So if so we, I can go ahead and use my I inspiration. Would. Go for okay. it. Okay. I got a six that time. So okay, that's no. actually worse. <laughs> See, you, unfortunately, looking at him sort of darting towards you um, and his cloak billowing and moving around, you are almost sort of hypnotized by the movement and you find yourself feeling slightly dizzy and sick. And you have to, and, and you just find yourself, you're down. You are on. You are on the. You are on the ground, prone. <laughs> you are knocked prone by this feeling of nausea that's just by this you. grizzled old man going a with a cape <laughs> like that, <laughs> kind of like wobbling around. To be honest with you, I mean that probably would knock you sick. So hey, <laughs> so he's that's what he's done. So it's Adam Mills go. What are you gonna okay. do? Well, I mean, it was. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Like, the burning hand spell um it it has like a cone yep a cone effect yep. that does it affect only to creatures or it can affect yep. also it's... okay it, it affects <laughs> everything it defines on. basically okay, I'm, I'm, you, yeah I unfortunately think... you have to imagine that from the point that yeah. you're standing out yeah, Anything exactly. within that's, this like fifteen why. foot cone is gonna uh, get frizzled. <laughs> so... Okay, then then I, I won't no, use that. No. <laughs> I don't want probably, to go to my party members. It's just... that's best if your um, mem party members are so, like either them. else well, I like they yep. like elsewhere and he's one over there and you can and you've got yeah. this sort of cone yeah, line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So... Okay, not not that I really mind mm, killing them, but uh, maybe <laughs> they can be of help. So it's about, this, about the dress comment, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all about okay, yeah. Then I'll, about use, the uh, I'll make some distance to him. Okay, I move away from from him, so okay. he, he's not actually too near. And I'll cast a ray of frost. Nice. So, so this is so this is your this is a cantrip. So yeah. what does it look like when you cast ray of frost at him? Like I close my hand uh -huh. and fist it starts to like look for really frost yeah and then just throw throw the frost at him like, nice yeah. 
So the rest of you see this this streaking light of like of blue white frost um hitting basically going to what because he's got his he's got his back to you, hasn't he? Because he's he was running towards um Ash. So he's yeah. still got his back towards you. And so the rest of you can see this coming, but he doesn't see it coming. Because he doesn't see it coming. Um I am going to let you roll. Um, I'm going to let you add one to your uh, one to your damage. So ro- roll a d one d eight. Uh, I'm not rolling the twenty four. No, no, because it, oh, this okay. is basically the, this is this it, is just yeah. This is dark hit. Okay. Oh no! Hold That's on! Great. No, I'm I'm oh, no, I'm shit. lying. No. It is a ranged spell attack. Sorry, yeah. I'm going. I'm go. I've got. So I'm trying to uh, yeah, juggle no, too okay. many things. Okay, so okay. your yes, your spell attack. Roll a d tw- roll a tw- roll a d twenty and add five. Okay, it's thirteen plus five, eighteen. Oh yes, that hits him. <laughs> okay. So now you can roll your now you can roll your attack, and you're going to add, you're going to add one for the fact that he's got his back to you. Okay, seven plus one. Okay. <laughs> so basically, this is. Like, I hit. You I, ha- oh I yeah. <laughs> a little bit of damage. Yeah. So, um, his um, <laughs> but, um, but what it does is it actually freezes his cloak in place, which means he can no longer use his cloak attack for the next turn. Nice. Okay. So it's his go, yeah, and he turns guys. around. Who haven't I? Tra- who haven't I attacked yet? Talk to you. I don't think I've attacked Kala, have I? Yeah, no. Oh, right, I'm coming after you. <laughs> Unfortunately, he yeah. c- he can't use his griffin wing because um, he tries to go for his cloak to try and send that stinging kind of, like, um, like wind towards you, but his cloak is frozen solid and he can't do it. And he just snarls and he runs towards you with his club trying to make a melee attack against you. Um, and it's and he hits twenty. Is that more than more or less than your armor class? Hits more. <laughs> that <laughs> hits, which means that he take that takes three points of bludgeoning damage to you. <laughs> so, so as he kind of basically he runs up to you, sort of snarling, and he she, he slams it down on your shoulder, making Ooh. you sort of drop down slightly. Um, which then means it's Rowan's a turn to attack. Okay, so as the fight has started, this uh, really well-to-do noble persona has changed. <laughs> and Rowan's like slowly <laughs> hunched over oh, and starts Freya. swaying. Freya. 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 Yeah. Touch the speak. speak. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, if, so you hear, if you fight... hear us using your name, not your character name, it's probably us yeah. being like, <laughs> we'll, we'll sort out touch to speak before that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, go on. So, as the fight has started, you because Rowan's only 26, so he's quite young for a, a human, but especially young in this group of elves and half elves. Yeah. So, he's getting really excited by this fight, and you can see this huge grin across his face as he starts sway side to side. And he's just going to full on bolt uh, towards this knight wanting to prove himself. Okay. Big swing with his great axe. Nice. Okay, so take a roll to hit. Okay, so that is 16. I can't remember. Oh my god. <laughs> That's really bad. Yeah, yeah, no, you hit. Oh, you... nice. Brilliant. Oh, you, yeah, you hit. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this, this guy has got less armor class than a goblin. I mean, seriously. <laughs> So uh, I hit him for How has he ele- 11, 11 altogether. 11 so just... altogether. Okay, so again, that would that would hit. Um, <coughs> there are basically that, that that's how like that's how fighting works in. It's so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's how fighting works. You'll get more into it. You'll get faster at it, which means that you won't have as much sort of feeling of like downtime necessarily as you're kind of as you're going through it'll kind of it'll speed up because each round is supposed to only take six seconds 
it's, and it's not gonna t obviously like take like literally six seconds but that's how that's how long it's gonna t it's supposed to take for them for you to do all of these actions so it's supposed to be this like flurry of battle of all kind of wailing in and fighting you guys rolled incredibly well <laughs> um, oh. two. So, at one point yeah. <laughs> very quickly the way that uh, because it's getting it's getting on i don't want to sort of go on for too long because we've been on for we've been on for like a, quite a bit now so i don't want to take like take any more of your time really but the way that it would generally work is that you might try and basically pump this guy for like for information so the way that you would probably want to do this is the person who has got the best insight would want to try and convince him to talk so does in, any of you you don't rowan because i will tell you that right now you i'm just going to say no because i don't have your information <laughs> but does anyone have mm -hmm. any numbers against insight I plus five insight in my skills so do I. Plus two. Yeah. okay yeah. So, so and what do you have our mail sorry plus three plus um th proficiency yeah so the two um so would be like ash ash and, Ka right? ash and Kala are going to be the best people to um to get to to do an insight check so if i sort of said um you go uh roll, roll an insight check you can either decide um you can either both roll for it or one of you can do something called an assist which basically means that one of you will get to roll two dice so it's either you can both try independently or one of you can try so it depends What's on whether the, you want uh, to kind assist, of assist more or less the assist it's... would basically mean if you for instance um you ash would say um would say to Kala, i'm going to assist you so basically it's like the um the, the the sort of dice equivalent of you standing behind her looking angry <laughs> and, <Can I> help? <laughs> and what she gets to do support. at that point is it basically maybe it's... flipping a dagger in my hand <laughs> yeah basically kind of like <laughs> yeah like kind of balance it like kind of picking something out of your teeth with it and what that basically means is Kala gets an like advantage on a roll so you get to roll two you get to roll twice and you take the best um otherwise you can both you can both sort of try independently so like bad cop bad and cop and see who gets better and see who gets better yeah so you, you can you can do it either way it depends on what you want to do so do i mean do you want to both do it independently this time just sure. both, both sure. go yeah so doing it so go for an insight check so it's a d20 just kind of look at each other just like who, which which of us want to yeah, and and, 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 just, and and you're both, and you can both just see your boat. You both just zone in on him, and you can see, you, and like ever, like Aramil and Iona and Rowan just take a step back and just like, yeah, you don't want to <laughs> get, you don't want to get him like, on the bad side of these two. So go on, what did you roll? As we we add the we roll the t d twenty right? Yep, and then you add your five because right. that's your proficiency skill. At fourteen. Fourteen. What did you get, Kala? Have both of them used their inspiration, or is that just like I have? Yeah, that was just fine. I haven't, but I rolled eighteen. So oh, I <laughs> yeah, I think Honestly, yeah, I'm right. not lying. Like, <laughs> wow. Okay, so he basically he he looks at both of you, and he you can see he's bloody and he is bruised, and he looks at you, Ash, and he goes. He's quite impressive for little girls, <laughs> and you kind of, and you can <laughs> yeah, see, and, and he, he looks at both of you as he can see you both like riling up, like, don't call me a little girl, <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> and um, he's obviously you kind of get the sense that he's actually impressed um, with, um, he's impressed with with he is impressed with all of you, and in that kind of situation with those kind of roles he'd probably give you sort of he'd give you more information so i'm not going to give it to you now i might just i'll send it to you by email but he'll give you some information maybe about the um the road that you're about to travel on um information about maybe like things he's heard um that there have been whispers maybe about 
there, that there might be goblins and like there's somebody was like attacked by a goblin ambush not that long ago. I want to know what this cargo is taking. Yeah. Uh, yeah, same. <laughs> yeah, this is the kind of thing that you can put. You can pump him for information, and then you can also do insight checks to see whether you think that somebody is lying or not. <laughs> you can use persuasion. You can also use intimidation. You can try and like intimidate people to give you information, or you can try. Can and, I like, charm him? Gently, you can charm him. You can do all of these kind of things if, like, when it comes to it. But that, in essence, is how D- is how D and D works. It's basically yeah. like, it's a, it's just basically a big story that's played by you. It's like a choose your own adventure story, but with your imagination and some dice. That's it. And then <laughs> I'm just the person who's just conducting it all, kind of being like, oh, <laughs> and just seeing well, where you take it. Is there anything that you don't understand that you need me to do, that you need me to tell you, that I can tell you, like, by um, message later, whatever, because I think that we all probably... I think Ash needs his uh, skills filling out. I will sort that out. I will sort that. Ash, skills, anything else? Are we, um... Are we doing uh, levels based on events in the story? Yes. Just because it's easier to manage. Yes. Cool. <laughs> oh yes. I have tried to do it's it much based. Better. I have tried to do it based on experience points before, and everyone levels up at different times, and it's mm. miserable. Uh, no. Um, basically, it is going to be. Uh, this is part one of the story. If you don't die, you level <laughs> up. That's that's kind of what it's I'm going so to be. That's good. Be. <laughs> if you're dead, you don't level up. Only the worms level up if you die. <laughs> um, is there anything at all? And the the big question is, do you want to carry on with it? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, sure. yeah. yeah? Okay, then I will probably bid you farewell <laughs> for the mm-hmm. evening. What I will do is if you want to, because it, it, there's quite a lot to take in, once you've thought about it a little bit and you've taught, you've kind of like chatted it over or you've like done whatever, if you've got questions or anything like that, um, drop me a line. And if I don't know, I will find out for you. Um, <laughs> there are various things like you need, like components, various like um letters that mean certain mm. things but i can't remember exactly what they are um so i will find those things out for you um and i will send you information that you would have got if i hadn't like talked so much and also um we will maybe find a time and a day to actually do our first proper session but yeah. as you can see it takes longer than you think it's gonna take so um when people say, "Oh, it's only going to be like an hour and a half," no, it, you think you're like three hours. Three hours, usually, yeah. yeah. You're talking three to okay. you're talk, usually talking three to four hours. So it might be worth certainly with you, Shadow, to if we if, to look at your. Um, I only get my work schedule two weeks in advance, so if we need to make it a month in advance, I can always see if I can get a day off and call a day off if we have a day. Are you sure? Well, if, yeah. we can, if we could work it, I mean, generally speaking, right. I think I for... think with two weeks in advance, can be yeah. can be an hour. Okay. And so... it's, a gen- it's, it's a generally speaking, I think it'll ha- it'd have to be a, a weekend for um for uh, for flame, yeah, because of work. So it'd have to be yeah. um, it'll have to be a weekend. So it'll be a case of we'll look and see if we can find like you've got like. A Saturday or Sunday, and what kind of time people are available? Because I, I can certainly, generally speaking, like work around as long as I know. Again, and two weeks is is fine for me to kind of prep with my sleep and everything. So I think we just, we sort of see see how it goes, play it by ear. But if we can at least try for like once every two weeks, that would be really good. Because otherwise, you forget. Yeah. Kind of how if you ca- if we can, but with um with shadows work it might not be as possible as much but i mean i don't know how people are during the week for evenings and stuff but which uh, apart from mondays every other monday and every tuesday and basically yeah and i know that if it goes late it means yeah. that for like work and various other things so that's like that it, that can cause on on a weekday i wouldn't have arrived home yeah yep so 
Yeah. I, I, I arrived nearly 8 p.m., so 7 p.m. GMT. Okay, so yeah. So it's, it's, it's way too late. Yeah, that's getting, uh, it's getting too late. But I, we see how it, we see how it works. We play this by ear. Okay? Yeah. I think yeah. that's yeah. probably the best way of doing it. Yeah. So guys, yeah. um, I think that that will work really well. I think um, if you've got, like I said, if you've got anything to ask, do. Um, I will sort of, I will put some things together and sort of prep a little bit more, but yeah thank you very much you rolled incredibly well as well so um yeah <laughs> thank you everyone a little, yeah. little bit myself. a little bit worrying actually yeah. how well you guys rolled i might have to make things a little bit tougher. i mean <laughs> i, I kind of tripped over my own feet but it's fine yeah. <laughs> I did, absolutely but it kind bits. of fits with your character kind of the fact that you're sort of quite quite quiet that maybe you like you weren't paying necessarily like that much of attention or something like you in the just, moment why not and i was just like oh shit i was not ready <laughs> yeah absolutely wasn't ready for this probably should have stopped before i used the thorn whip rather than trying to do it on the move yeah i just wanted to say thank you for involving me i've been wanting to do this for ages guys a big thank you to lise for organizing all oh, this as well definitely just yeah. take... you are very welcome yeah. i am very glad that you all want to do it it's it's it 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 is it is a lot of work for all of us and adding and the time and everything else but it it's fun and it's and it is different it, you will not find anything like this like in anything else that you'll do so it's very unique and it's really cool to do and yeah, yeah it's good it's like social social fun yeah, <laughs> <laughs> anyway shadow go and have fun with tuna ash yes. and freya have a really nice i like that you I like the green i like the amount of green in the background and by the way um and the I'm, Star Wars. <laughs> yeah i was gonna say um super have you seen the cushion no mm -hmm. oh yeah oh, <laughs> yeah that cushion oh okay yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. oh and... well, I, I i didn't i i we're totally I adults because we kind of had a, have a nerdy now, but to our before... lounge instead of like Follows. When I went out, I wore I wore this, of course. Yeah. <laughs> has he has he gone? Gone to get some. Ah! Oh! Oh! <laughs> that is nice. I like him. That's great. I love that. Okay, guys, I'm How going to. All the way. I'm going to say goodbye yeah. and Bye, see you all soon. Bye. 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 Bye.